and try and avoid the millennium pause. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Let's Drone Out. Today is the 16th of the 3rd, 2023, and we are live on YouTube at the usual time of 8 pm. Come join us. Uh, tonight we have a special guest, uh, the uh, Fedor Commander himself, Mr. Kiss Ultra. Welcome. Say hello. Hi, guys. Hello. Uh, we, are, we also have the man with the lovely moustache, Stephen. Hello. We've, ed- we've medicated him. We've educated him. <laughs> he's had physio on his shoulder and he's in a much better mood. Sorry, yeah. uh, viewers, if I was a bit cranky last week. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I would like to say I'm not normally like that. Might be slightly alive, but I was in a bunch of pain. I was a bit cranky. No yeah. Better and just... and uh, Mr. I've got two ultras on the way, Cole. <laughs> Howdy. No more flying V1 for you. Okay. Antic. He's also been educated. <laughs> yes. I will be. I will be very shortly. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I think it's my turn to sit here and flash uh, 48 <laughs> onto, onto the Kiss Ultra. Um, Alexander, thank you so much for making the time uh, to chat to us. We were deeply sorry for any misunderstanding and miscommunication, and we are idiots. Um, I'm an idiot. I'll just say that right now because I can't sort out the history of KISS in my head. But this show isn't about the history of KISS. This is about KISS Ultra. And we're talking about all the new and exciting things that are happening in the world of KISS Ultra from V1 to V2 and new stuff that's coming. So really excited to hear about that. Great. Um, Thanks for making time for us. It's just really appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Um. Also, guys, uh, a bit of a call to action. Um, I have a good friend of mine. Uh, he was an original host of LDO. Um, remind me at the end of the show to give another shout out. But uh, it's Clint. His father is stuck out in the Philippines and is in, unfortunately, in intensive care. And um, there's a GoFundMe link in the in the description. If you can donate and help out please do his dad's not got insurance and they want to try and get him back to the uk if you can if you can spare anything please he helps set up and start start the show he also helped with like you know taking steel and drip around the uk and all in all he's been a great asset and a friend to the show he's taught me how to build pcs helped uh with the um d v e l the 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 firmware that cracks the d g i goggles to enable video out and stuff um so yeah he's he's worked alongside those guys so yeah any any help is m- greatly appreciated um cole do you wanna start uh, with your uh, or stephen your your question oh, I, mean, I guess I, I have a question i guess i could start it off with um maybe for a, a little segue but um so alex i was actually just wondering um is there any wrong information about kiss ultra that you've heard that you might want to correct or set the record straight right off the bat just to clear the air on anything uh that's uh, i heard a lot of wrong information on the previous show <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a really short, uh, short thing. Uh, yep. Ultra, it's not a product of Flyduino or or any other companies. It's a, it's my product alone, alone in the team. Uh, there is no company called Kiss Ultra. Well, there because yeah, well, that's me. Well, and company you cannot call company for the commander. Uh, that's why um, I decided just to use Kiss Ultra as a trade name everywhere in the shop and the URL of the GUI and the product itself. So uh, uh, basically, I'm doing design of hardware, software, GUI, OSD, uh, manufacturing, uh, sales, and shipping. 
Wow. <laughs> so yeah, that's one man show. Uh, one more thing, it's uh, it's not my day job, it's my hobby. So yeah. I'm doing it in my spare time. So that's why there I don't want to put my company name to to the Kiss. Yeah. And uh, Kiss Ultra means beyond Kiss. So that's what we did. We took everything that we had in Kiss for well what we had in Patreon. And uh, we just pushed on a new level on the hardware and software side. So that's that's whole idea about the name and uh, well, the project behind it. Very good. Yeah, that that uh, that's a great explanation. I appreciate that. I think a lot of people, you know, now that that's out there, maybe people can stop, uh, you know, speculating. Now they have the hard facts. So good. Very simple. Good. Yep. Keeping it simple. Good. Uh, any uh, anything on your guys end? Do you have any more questions for? for I was going to say while we're talking about that, um, you mentioned kind of where where you started with this Kiss Ultra. When you started out working on Kiss Ultra, what problems did you want to solve? Uh, well, basically, the Kiss was at the point uh, when there was a two code lines. One in Patreon, I was doing you know DJI stuff, uh, return to home, and uh, in general. You know, fun stuff. And another code line was uh, FedTech that uh, support supposed to do support for Kiss firmware, official Kiss firmware. Well, they did something that I don't don't want to talk about it. And uh, the moment when I start seeing that things not going not in the right direction, so I thought, well, I think it's time to probably stop committing to uh, main... maybe a better way of asking would be what were the goals when you set out and you're like yeah i'm gonna do my own thing i was what about did you to want do, i to... was about to say that sorry man <laughs> sorry so I, I decided to start my own hardware and uh, the main thing what was missing on keys since the beginning there was no supporter for sd so oh, that see. was that was uh idea to integrate uh osd to kiss push it to new hardware on top tier uh, CPUs and uh, basically start from there. Yeah, well, I think that's awesome because like I'm, I'm still on the old uh, KISS stuff. I got to use the Wolf PDBs um, so uh, to get the OSD. In it. So I think that is, you know, the fact that you did put OSD on there, that's obviously a huge game changer for a lot of people that, that like the KISS platform. So very cool. Yeah, and uh, the OSD, well, I never liked OSDs. I really respect what Wolf did with, uh, he probably did best OSD on the market for, for KISS for time being. And, uh, well, I wanted something new. So I wanted full graphics, I wanted transparency. And the best of all, I wanted to be on the same CPU with a uh, flight controller. I didn't yeah. want to have any serial ports and separate updates and this kind of things. So it is, um, well, a very interesting thing to do, very hard thing to do, but uh, that's uh, what we did. It also saves a lot of space on the board, doesn't it? Very few people realize quite how big that OSD chip is relative to all the other components. Well, it's uh, first of all, it's one CPU less, and uh, OSD on Ultra, it's nine square millimeters. So it's it's three by three millimeters. It's uh, half of the size of Mark's chip. That's what makes, you know, clocking of graphical OSD mm -hmm. from CPU. Of course, there are, there are issues when the processor needs to fly. And at the same time, you need to clock out this uh, OSD in very, very high high rate. So I'm doing like 60, 60 uh, FPS of OSD. So, and- Fantastic. Wow. Yes. That's very good. Well. That's was that uh, challenging how... to work with all the different cameras as well? Because a lot of people attach uh, really cheap cameras to their quads and that can be awkward. Uh, yes, there is absolutely no standard on the sync level of the cameras and that is essential for synchronizing the video output uh, of OSD on video. And uh, there are some chips that help to normalize it somehow. But uh, what I did, I did uh, also within OSD, the graphical tools and that's automatic uh, sync uh, sync calibration and you can see graphically your sync levels in OSD so it's wow it's quite Great. easy to do uh, now but uh, yeah there that was some challenges so you can even diagnose if you've got a bad camera you could actually yes. see if your sync you is can working see it, from yes. the camera 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you, you've got the the hardware tools, isn't it? And then you in the OSD, and yeah. then you select the camera sync, and the OSD flashes and blinks. Yeah, and then it 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 sets the timing, which is very clever. No, it's very simple actually. It just goes uh, the it checks sync level sync level between zero and zero point three volts, and uh, you see how many syncs you get. Uh, within that sync level and if it is uh, checks out with a standard of video that's that your camera is providing then you see nice graph and then it just uh, cent centers it and yeah it works just simple and quite well cool cool yeah, yeah i heard that's been challenging this some cameras you l look at different scenes of different colors or brightness and the sync level will like fly up and down and vary and uh, very clever to yeah, get that right. It happens sometimes, but uh... um, yeah. One of my uh, questions is um, with Kiss, I believe Paul was trying to make a flight controller that was very simple. You know, keep it uh, super simple. You know, uh, um, that's I think that's why they called it Kiss, or I assumed that's what it was. <coughs> what what is your end goal and is it different for kiss ultra mm, it's not different it's not different at all uh i wanted to, well the thing is uh i liked the feel of kiss and i was flying it and enjoying it and i was uh, coding for kiss uh yeah voluntarily for free for like five years and uh, I wanted to continue it, and uh, I want to keep the feel and uh, push it on just a new level. It still needs to be a uh, simple. I see it. The whole idea is it's made for pilots, not for nerds. I like to say that, and uh, we're trying to uh, we're trying it uh, within the team to keep it as simple as possible. So if things can be automated, they are. If there's something doesn't belong to GUI, it, it's just not there. So we try not to pollute anything with stuff that only one person from thousand will ever use. Like, uh, I don't know, Imperial March. Yeah, very nice, but annoying after the second time you hear it. So it's trying to get clean uh, with very same defaults that uh, people can just start flying right away, uh, trying to make wizards that uh, takes uh, all heavy lifting on the things like setting up your motor, or setting up your ESCs. I think uh, you guys already tried, so you just do a few clicks and basically your ESC configured, your directions configured, prop in, prop out, click, you're done. And this is all what you need to do and select your arm switch and this is it. And uh, that's what uh, what most of people do. They just have one of the four or five presets we have. And uh, this is it. So you don't need much. If you want to go more advanced level, you can you know, tweak some performance uh, features. Uh, but uh, basically, it is, it is what it is. So uh, simple. OK. Um, so you've just released. Well, a couple of months ago, you released the Kiss um, V2, Ultra V2. Yes, a bit early. I announced it, I think, in September. And uh, in December, we had first uh, first batch of them. Uh, that's, uh, the second batch was in, in March, beginning of March. Uh, all sold out, of course. And uh, I just ordered a new batch. So that's basically how we roll. Mm -hmm. I do small batches. What does V2 regular. bring to the pilots? Uh, V2, well, as, as you know, uh, KISS was uh, heavily based around MPU 6000 uh, gyro chip. Yep. And uh, uh, that, those chips are end of life. And, uh, well, I have like how thousands of them left, so I didn't want to use them anymore. And the re reliability of them was horrible actually uh so i was uh, looking for half a year for a new gyro that can be used well i find one uh, industrial gyro that i use i am and uh yeah that's the one key change of the flight controller 
the second was the uh, I had a lot of complaints about back because I just copied it from uh, KSV2, which was really really shy on the power output. So I replaced it with two amps, uh, five volt, two, one point seven two amps. It doesn't matter. Uh, I think it's three max, but. Um, uh, uh, there was also issues with uh, uh, protection of the CPU because high density CPU, uh, well, apparently it needed more protection. So uh, when people start using it, sometimes it it burns uh, because it doesn't like electricals and uh, static electricity and this, you know, you name it. So this, I had all protection for all the serial lines, all of the short lines. So to make it, you know, undiable. So even easier for pilots. Yeah, well, it's easier, easier and cheaper for pilots because it, this needs to be, you know, crash resistant and stuff. Gyro is like two times more crash resistant than MPU. Uh, uh, they they don't just die, and the rest also needs to be uh, uh, prone to you know survive all the uh, power spikes and everything. So there is integrated spike uh, spike absorber, so you don't need to use it. Uh, Beck is eight S rated, so people flying it on 8S without any protection. Well, you need uh, caps, of course, but um, you always need them. Uh, so uh, these things were changed. What else? Yeah, I think that's it. The board was redesigned from scratch, basically. So, so I don't... if it's 8S tolerant, does that mean pilots flying on 6S are going to have more headroom and it'll be yes. tougher? Yes, that's, that's the idea. I think it's up to 36 volt. So it's even more than eight S, but you need little gap to survive it. Excellent. Yeah. So now V two is out. V two is on the market. Uh, where do where does Kiss Ultra go from there? Uh, well, we have, as you know, we have different form factors. I really hate when you need to break something from from flight controller to mount it on different pattern. So yesterday, this thingy arrived. This is uh, Kiss Ultra Mini. Oh, hang on. Let, let us. Oh, oh. go on. Oh. That's why uh, you TV saw it. You saw it on Discord. I sold it this one. I was testing it. So um, this is uh, basically the same thing like uh, uh, I can make it smaller again. Um, same thing as uh, V2, uh, with one exception. There are only four motor outputs on the connector. So this is four quads, four quads only. You can run eight with uh, with one wire, but we really, really don't recommend to use one wire because it's just just lower than the shot. Uh, same back, same gyro, same CPU, same OSD. It's always has analog OSD, so we don't com compromise on it. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically the same thing, but smaller. Wow. And as as uh, as uh, Tommy, <clears throat> oh my God, says, who flies, you know, who 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 flies, thirty five by thirty five anymore? Uh, me, of course, but you know, like apparently, you know, the, the way forward is twenty by twenty. I don't know. We do uh, both of them. Uh, I think uh, I made like two hundred and fifty of minis. Uh, there, there, there are more demand now, but uh, the main disadvantage of mini was the weak back. Whereas the bracers like to have minis, but they need juice for cameras and transmitters. So that was addressed in V2. So I think this season, uh, quite a lot of uh, racers will try uh, mini two on the tracks. Excellent. Yeah, we started to see some hugely powerful 20 mil ESCs. Really solid stuff. I think there's some 75 amp race ESCs, loads of 65 amp ones out there. We've got um, a post from. No, go on. Oh, got yeah. a post from Crunk saying. Oh, the oh was forgetting. Yeah, well, because it is a different gyro, uh, you do need to have a bit different tune. And uh, with uh, introducing of uh, new gyro to V2. Uh, I also made a separate uh, pit controller. We call it experimental mode, but it's uh, it's a different pit controller that uh, has a little bit different mouth, a different filtering, and uh, uh, better suited for new dryer. dryer. It works on V1 too, and it does need to have different pits. We have three presets that Krunk provided. Thank you very much, Alex. 
uh, and he donated it to to the profiles in in the GUI, so people can choose out of three uh, starting points and uh, then continue tuning it. Not much tuning needed, by the way. Cole, do you want to ask one of your questions? Yeah, well, um, let me just pull it up here. So it's sort of uh, off topic from what we are on right now. Uh, but you did mention something about how, you know, usually they get sold out or they, they're all sold out at one point. But um, how do you handle criticism from people who say, oh, we want quantity over quality? Um, how, how do you deal with uh, the people saying, we want more, we want more, we want more? Like, how, does that, uh, how does that feel on your side? Uh, well, uh, mixed feeling. So I really don't rush to flood market with uh, with flight controller. So I I rather have a smaller group and uh, do small batches because it's very expensive to make flight controller if and the error can cost like five digit numbers. So uh, I rather have small group of pilots who like it and uh, I pretty much know most of them and on Discord and I chat with them all the time and helping them all the time. Then have a flooded market and have ultras laying on the shelves. Yeah. So uh, it's not that small amount of uh, ultras produced if you know the numbers. Now we're talking about three, three and a half thousand of flight controllers. So it's it's small steady stream, but uh, yeah. this is this is how it works and this is what we chose uh as the way of producing them well and like you said you're a one-man band there's only so much you can do you don't want to flood the market and then have things laying on, around on the shelf not being used so you know it's and and at the end of the day you're going to do what's best and what you think is best for the community and for what your product is so so be it i i think that's yeah. not a not a bad way of doing things like you get to set your rules it's your thing so all the power to you. Yeah, that's uh, I absolutely agree with you. And uh, also keep in mind, uh, if I check the statistics, I have about 95% of all ultras are active and flying. So they're activated and then used. They're not in the shelves. And, you know, even people using them, so they don't hamster them for, you know, rainy day or something. So they all yeah. in use. Uh, that's yeah. more interesting than have half of your stock somewhere in the resellers. Well, and that, that actually kind of brings on to my next question. How do you feel about the scalpers? Because I, I have seen some here and there. <laughs> well, I had uh, not not longer than today uh, uh, incidents with the scalping because people don't like scalpers. I also don't like scalpers. Yeah. I'm trying to make margin on the flight controllers as minimum as I can get. So yeah. it's not about money and people need, it needs to be affordable. So uh and scalpers well they basically taking chance from you and uh well making you pay more because they were there and you aren't and yeah. you weren't so uh yeah i just uh, decided if uh, uh, people reporting scalpers uh regularly on discord because yeah. yeah they don't like it and nobody likes it so i just uh, if i know who that is i just uh, ban, ban people without questions from discord if you want to do business you know go go away and this is my house and this is my rules yep well um, yeah that, that makes a lot of sense i it, it just sucks too when you put so much hard work into something and someone's trying to profit 20 30 bucks it's like like People want this product, and you want thirty dollars. Like, get the get the heck out of here with that. It's just kind of ridiculous. But oh, it's a bit hard to do from my shop because uh, I do check all the orders uh, before I'm packing them, and uh, if there's something suspicious, I trying to contact uh, the uh, the buyer and uh, you know investigate what's what. So if yeah. somebody tries to get twenty, so uh, no, not gonna <laughs> happen. Refund, re <Yeah>. <laughs> restock. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, Stephen, do you want to read this out quickly? Oh, Stephen, you're muted there, buddy. You don't have. Sorry about that. Uh, Tribal FPV question. Hi guys, Kiss FCs are my favourite for freestyle. How do we go about getting Kiss Ultra in the UK? I tried on the website, but it doesn't seem to ship to the UK. Um, no doubt, our government being a uh, useless, uh, stupid people, and uh, breaking us off from Europe, causing oh. these problems. But how? Would UK pilots get hold of the kit? 
Uh, I hope to send uh, from next batch. Uh, it's bigger. It's like twice bigger than normal. So I hope to send uh, some to UK. I don't know who is going to sell it because it's, you know, oh, the decision goes at last minute. And, uh, well, first I need to have it myself before I'm shipping it uh, to UK. Uh, well, we'll find a way. Uh, this time I sent small, small batch to our team pilot to distribute it in, in the UK. And uh, I think about 20 people, 20 pilots in the UK will get it. So it's small. I know it's not much, but I'm trying to do my best to cover as many countries as I can. Yep. Um, yeah, I also, going back to what we were talking about, um, <clears throat> you know, the difference between, uh, you know, uh, the KISS Ultra uh, V1 and V2, and you were talking about experimental modes, um, please can you explain the new braking factor and acceleration <coughs> factor and what they do? Well, they do helping brake and helping accelerate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, braking factor it's it's not new i think it was introduced uh in the summer last year especially for bangers so what it does it uh, it helps quads to stop sharper without you know tuning a lot uh, by uh, changing the pits uh during during that move so if you have uh, aggressive stick movements, it pumps. If you have up. aggressive stick movement, it's uh, yeah, it will at the end of the move when you decide to stop, it will see that and make it easier for quad to stop. Basically, it's also a percentage, so the effect of that uh, factor will you can control. Zero is nothing like before. Hundred, it will try to do best to to stop without a lot of D involved. Is that like uh, feed forward then? No. no. Uh, uh, acceleration factor. You can think it's some sort of the feed forward, but it's uh, well, it's not fully uh, what well feed forward. It's it's just a common term for the pit control. It's not something like uh, some people invented. But uh, what I do when when you start move, uh, it's it kicks in pits that uh, helps you to spin up quad faster to to basically to rotation that you requested to set point. Uh, you also can set percentage of it, and uh, some people like it very low for cinematic. Uh, some people like it crazy, like hundred for extreme crazy uh, uh, bank moves. It's it's personal choice. It's also mixed with rates, what you use. So there is no simple uh, answer well, how it works for you. I'm usually say, you know, you just put it in and see how it, what numbers fits you. So there are different uh, different stories. Some people like 25, some people say it's, it's very personal. I'm not going to, in details. It helps. Uh, you also need to have uh, uh, your powertrain be capable to spin up uh, and have quite good torque to react on it. Great. Um, so you, are we allowed to talk about the new OSD stuff? Is sure, that... why not? Okay. So, um, I... Yeah, you 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 sent me uh, a little video. Um, is it right to play that? Yeah, sure, go ahead. It's changed okay. already, but uh, yeah, last change was today at eight o'clock. But okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. So whatever Sorry. you show now is irrelevant now. <laughs> yeah. Nah, it's uh, concept is uh, is the same. So yeah, yeah, it's just usability wise. What? So yeah, we've got. Kiss Ultra here. We go over mm -hmm. to the OSD mirror. That mirrors everything on the OSD. And you can see now you can place and drag and drop stuff that we've had on Beta Flight for a long time now. But well, you got your... yes and no. So, yeah, uh, I can tell you what, uh, what, uh, what. Uh, Interesting in this uh, solution, yeah. I have an OSD mirror for analog, for all digital OSDs. And basically, it's all rendered on flight controller. 
it's not not in the browser a browser just just shows the screen that's why it's called mirror so basically what it does it sends command to flight flight controller and all interaction what you see here it's working on fc itself so if you yeah. If you go to OSD, you can do it with sticks. Here you can do it with sticks on the radio, with keys, with mouse, you know, with everything. So it's all integrated, it all works together. But it is on the flight controller. That's that's the big difference yeah. from, from the rest. And it's snappy, it's you can do a lot of things here. So but yeah, on on you know, and what sets it apart from the, the beat flight is your getting you know the the real time information a lot more configuration yes and and uh, obviously those handy hardware tools and the menus um, look really nice yeah very clean well, and uh, as as a fellow okay. dyslexic um i find it very easy to read and understand and uh like with most things, I ask about something, and Alex is just like, "It's in the OSD." <laughs> so with Kiss there. Ultra, yeah. if you're ever wondering, or if you ever thought, "Hmm, how do I do this?" It's in the OSD. <laughs> so, so once you've got your camera connected, you've got your VCX plugged in, you just do everything else in the OSD. That's what you're saying. It's the same thing. You, if you have goggles on. You see this picture, one to one. It's pixel copy. If you have it in the GUI, it's the same pixel copy. So it's same experience, no matter where you're trying to connect from. I think that's the way it should yeah. be. So and this is it. this is the idea basically. That's what I, uh, I get it. I was just trying to figure out because because we have a configurator there, but it sounds like from what you're saying that anything you do in the configurator, there's an OSD equivalent. So the configurator with a PC is optional. Effectively, you could just wire it up and do everything at the field. Yes, that's the idea. Before you yeah, had to use uh, a keychain configurator, but what I did for OSD, uh, because I had of co a code of uh, keychain. And it has quite good UI and quite good code. So I just ported it on Ultra and make it graphical and in HD version out of it. So if you have Keychain, it's the pretty much the same thing. If you have OSD, it's the same thing. If you have a GUI with Mirror, it's also the same thing. And for people who don't like to use uh, Mirror, there is still GUI, just normal GUI what you can use. Web GUI, standalone GUI. Well, for God's sakes, we even have support for for Apple uh, processors now. Oh, Native, oh, natively, well yeah. Wow. No, I think no one does it yet. Are you trying to flash oh. it? Yeah. <laughs> oh dear! Live demos. Brace, brace, brace. Yeah. All I've got to do is not leave this tab because. <laughs> The federal no. commando will scream at me. <laughs> yeah, well, it's browser things, and just it goes post to all the scripts when it's not in focus. That's that's how it works. But uh, yeah, we can talk. It's a big firmware, so inside it is about eighty thousand lines of code. Wow. That's how, 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 how do much you find is time that? To do this? Is, yeah, <laughs> how much of that is new stuff you've written? Because there can't be much Kiss stuff left. Uh, there, there, there is Kiss stuff left because it has to be there because you know mathematics and stuff. So I can tell you there is six percent of code of original code of Kiss in there, and ninety four percent that that is mine code since since the beginning of my contribution to Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So it, it's, it is your baby. It is literally your baby. Yes, and I'm very protective the of it. So, uh, <laughs> well, uh, do, do you protect Kiss more than your cats, or is it equal? Well, it's a very, very dangerous question. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Those they cats don't look after themselves. <laughs> nah. So, yeah, we've had... Oh, that's my serial number. 
work. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, I know you're It's gone now. Hacking now. No. <laughs> Entered the mainframe. No. Yeah. I you've can turn it. You've, you've oh, added yeah, noise. It's, it's a little things, you know. We're trying, yeah. uh, trying to improve everything, you know, one thing at a time. Yeah, it's nice. People like it. Stephen, <laughs> truthfully, yeah. does this scare you? <laughs> I don't like the look, to be brutally honest. It reminds me of Windows 95. No. It's, uh, hey, it's, Windows... it's not about how it looks, it's how it works. I mean, right? if it works, it does the job. That's fine, right? You can't spend all your time polishing UIs. They don't help people to, to actually use features. It's just aesthetics, isn't it? So it doesn't really matter. And I've made my own fair share of ugly programs down the years that look way worse than this. So oh, I can't really complain too much. Well, see, I, this I think is, it's uh, impressive he's done it all on his own. That's it's a lot to write. Well, I was oh. going to say I I only know the Kiss GUI, so to that's me, it looks idea. Great. Yeah, that's yeah. the idea. It should be familiar because people using it for seven years. Yes, I don't want to change it a lot. It was lifted. It it had a facelift for Ultra because it's Ultra GUI now, and uh, you know all these little tiny tiny things. You know the model model with propellers. It's it's nice. It's cute. You know there is always Easter eggs in it. If you change throttle on your radio, the, it spins faster. So, <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, that's uh, as I said. It's a small things here and there, but you know it all sums up. I like it. Yeah. I was actually I had a question for you too. So. Um, any of the Kiss Ultra official team pilots or anybody you want to give a shout out to, um, just while we're on, we're on the topic, I guess. Yes, of course. Uh, they do all the testing and flying and feedback. That's the, one of the most important things of the process of improving the flight code. Well, we start very small. We say uh, we're a small group. Uh, I think uh, was uh, Livio Preda, you know, you know the guy, and uh, Krunkt, of course. Uh, we have Finley, uh, a kid from uh, from UK. Uh, we have a couple of guys from from the states uh, that a bit less uh, uh, active uh, this time. Uh, Kerry Kerry Knop, uh, uh, one of them. Uh, we have uh, recently acquired a few more people. Uh, there, uh, I think that was uh, Thanos. Uh, uh, you know those crazy Greeks, uh, Mike yeah. Mike X. That is, uh, I think, whole videos in the GUI is uh, his contributions. Uh, yeah. Very very good tester. Uh, uh, lately, we have uh, Dutch guy uh, Erwin E B R F P V. He's, uh, he's not, he's flying like every day. Um, we have uh, a Romanian guy uh, who is good to his electronics and uh, testing and uh, user interface, uh, you know, uh, call, uh, his name is uh, Ellen, uh, Ellen Victor, you know, all names from, from Discord. Uh, I, I'm afraid to to forget someone. Uh, two last guys who joined the team was uh, uh, Mike P and uh, Phantom FPV. So pretty in my book, uh, they're very good pilots and they're pushing pushing uh, quite hard. Sorry guys, if I forget some forget anyone, I'm a bit tired. So. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's what we do. I code, uh, they fly, they provide feedback, uh, logs. I code more, and uh, we we keep it rating until it's uh, everyone agrees it's a it's a good thing and worth it to be added. If not, it yeah. just goes straight to trash, and we start over again. Yeah. Small team. Uh, I'm very picky with uh, who I'm adding at the team. Uh, Ah, Gavin, that's that's one I forgot. Yeah, also UK oh, guy, the uh, Gavin Lee. So he's uh, a Morris bunk pilot, and uh, he's pushing quite hard. <laughs> I hope I didn't forget anyone else. Otherwise, do I you find time to fly yourself? No, I don't really fly a lot, honestly. First, it is taking pretty much all of my free time uh, for for last. Uh, Two years with Ultra, and uh, before was uh, uh, Pat Patreon firmwares and stuff. And uh, I'm crappy pilot, honestly. I, you know, I see what guys do, and I say like, Alex, you you just keep coding. 
you know, some people, you know, weren't born to fly. And uh, I got my kicks from coding and looking at the, how people use it, to be honest. Well, yeah, not everybody can do everything, I guess, right? And if, if you specialize yeah. and you have fun with that side of it, then, right, that's, that's good. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. Um, what, what's your, uh, what do you find most rewarding about doing Kiss Ultra? Uh, sorry, most what? Rewarding. Ah, uh, well, it's my daily routine. I'm waking up, having coffee, and watching the videos in the, in the video channel on Discord because every day somebody posted it, and some people just just makes me smile in the morning. That's that's the best thing. So then I have whole day like in a good mood. Yeah, you're like that's amazing. I did that. And like because like I, it gives you a sense of pride, right? You get to say yes, my absolutely. hard work, my hard work. This is a direct outcome and. That's so cool. That's very yeah. cool. It's like you're yeah. the pit crew at a racetrack. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, another one of my questions is, do you think you'll um, branch out to other aspects of the hobby for improvement? Mm, mm, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's better to concentrate on something one and simple and make it better. If, uh, well, you, you understand how it works and how much time I invest uh, to the project. I'm afraid if I will do something else, uh, I will just uh, let other products suffer. So full throttle one way and, you know, try to make it better. Well, best actually. Yeah. Just tunnel vision on one thing and just keep yes. your focus right there. Yeah. yeah. It works. It works best and all distractions there. Well, you know, you can't do everything. Mm. Yep. Yeah, that's very true. I it's funny because I I do photo, I do video, I do music, I do so many things, but it's very hard to focus in on one thing and master that. You know, it's okay to do multiple things, but it, you know, you really do get the most out of it if you can really hyper focus on that one. Yeah. Uh yes, I also did photography, I did uh, video and yeah. uh other things but somehow it fade out and some more important things just going forward yeah so, but uh yeah it is rewarding it is rewarding it's very cool and it's it's freaking fun to do to be honest yeah to say like well i have my own flight controller with with my own firmware and uh you know people like it so yeah what could go well, wrong and I how don't many think people you'd have can got say this that? far if it wasn't fun to do, like the amount of hours you must have put in just to learn how like the pick and place works and to make your own PCBs. You must have had so much dedication to just to get the prototypes done. Well, Ultra was my second hardware project ever. Well, I'm by education, I'm electronic engineer. So, but it was uh, like, uh, what, 35, 32 years ago. So I know, I know the theory and uh, well, but uh, practice was a little bit behind, so I made keychain configurator, which, which really lame. I'm look at it now and say, Alex, Alex, what what did you do? So it's it's horrible. It works. It's horrible. So uh, then I did uh, the ultra, and it also had like two or three revisions before it actually become like looking like flight controller. And uh, I put, uh, well, I gained a lot of knowledge, of course, and uh, then V2 was uh, even better. So every time you learn something, you put it in and you, you have something back and you learn more. So I, I think it's the only way to learn to do things. Yep. And I was agree. Googling, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stephen, I picked up an extra ultra. Will you fly it? I'll fly it, but uh, don't give me anything to build, please. Hang on to your build bits. I've I'm like way behind. I've yeah. no, it's fine. It's fine. Just just build him a quad and just send it. Yeah, for that guy for the SP racing. <laughs> we should get together and have a fly again. I think that's what I should yeah. do. And I'll, I'll just gently do a few power loops with your baby around some soft surfaces. <laughs> no, it's fine because um, once you're done, we're, we're sending it to Curry, and then when Curry's done, then we'll send it to uh, Lee and try and get it. Thing, Cole, have you got another question, or shall I go? Um, 
I, I guess, well, this was kind of a, I don't, maybe I asked it already, but like I said, I'm coming from the OG Kiss V1. So do you have any advice for someone like me coming from OG Kiss V1 to Ultra V2? Any advice for someone like me? Uh, do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hold on to yeah. your dick. Uh, yeah, you will be surprised what, what you're actually missing. And uh, you'll say, yay, holy crap, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not hamstering it. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, I, I, I actually, I, I did have another question. Um, so how, how intensive or what is like the, the testing or the QC process look like for you when you're doing all the, uh, the, the flight controller QC? Oh, well. Uh, there are three stages of QC. So uh, I asking for uh, more extensive ones. So yeah. first of all, the old boards being flashed and tested in China on the factory before they packed into the boxes. That's yep. the stage, stage one. They check gyro, they check barrow, they have rig that make basically FC go to the quad and they can check uh, motor output, they can check the OSD and everything. Then it goes to Germany to my uh, uh, to my partner company, and uh, the person there also checks them. Yeah, we had Better one time. Uh, none. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one batch with uh, it didn't really reach customers, but it was found very very easy that one component was not correct and uh it came to me and i found it and it sent i sent it back to germany and they resoldered everything basically by hands so that was 200 units and it was a very labor intensive pro process and they don't like to do that to be honest it's it's expensive so uh now they check it in germany and uh, i do uh, if i have big batch i check like 25 30 percent of the units uh, myself randomly so if I feel like uh, doing nothing, so I check more. But um, people want to have it as fast as, as they, they can. So uh, about 30% I, I can check myself. Uh, that's basically three steps. So I want to be sure uh, that this all legit and everything is working. And the first batch of uh, every new flight controller, I check everything. Just stupidly sitting, opening, checking, closing. It takes day. Do you put some wow. good music on in the background while you do that? Yeah, always. Good, good. <laughs> always. Um, so you know the 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 te do you like better nails probe test? Do you have a jig made up for the testing? Yeah. Uh, no, I I test uh, electronics because there is not much can go wrong with uh, let's say motor output or or receiver inputs. It's just straight connections. But if there is some soldering issue on gyro, that's that's bad. If there is soldering issue on bar, it's bad. And if uh, well, CPUs are never failed. So I I was amazed. It's uh, BGA uh, CPUs, and um, they stick to the board like there's no tomorrow. So no failures on that end. So, Do, um, so you know from China, how many? What's their success rate? What happens to the boards that don't make their testing? Do they still get sent to? No, I don't accept them anyhow. So if if they have ten from, uh, of course there's a, there are fire failures because machines are not perfect. They're very good, but they still do failures. Let's say ten from three hundred. Yeah, well, it's it's a loss, but uh, I'm not charged for that. I'm charged only for good units. Okay. Yeah, but that's you. It's still your comp component supply, though. Surely. I don't supply them components. Well, I do supply them CPUs and gyros and this kind of things, but uh, from my stock. Oh, so you don't? Yeah. yeah, I was just, I was just wondering. You know, did you harvest them back or? Did nah, they go you, to you need to rebuild them. You can't because you need to rebuild CPUs, and it's really valuable, well, intensive, yeah. painful. Yeah, yeah no worries. It happens. Um, what is the next feature you're going to work on for Kiss Ultra V2? Oof, a good question. 
Well, there are the small things that uh, that on my list. I don't think uh, a lot of uh, uh, big stuff. I need to improve RTH. There are some things need to be done in the receiver's land. You know, quality of life, basically. Flying code is constant improvement because every time pilot reports something can be better or doesn't work well that he thinks in certain conditions, that's just taken care of. Uh, well, uh, one thing at a time, you know, last week, uh, Mike P asked me to, yeah, why don't we have a mouse in uh, in the GUI? So I said, well, I will put mouse in the GUI, and but I will not make a Windows out of it because, oh, there is a button and you cannot click us. Nah, and it's too much work. Then well, three days later, and 30 hours coding later, so I put everything in there. So like, I will do it better and I will forget about it and we'll move on from it. That's how it works, basically. It's supposed to be fun. And if I see something that can be improved and make it easier for people, so uh, I'm doing it. So that's basically as we go. Yeah, the x cast guys are ch ch chiming in and wondering whether Ultra can be used in an x -class. Uh People use it in x class already. We have uh, we have some people on Discord who run it on big quads. I think Dutch guy. Uh, I'm, I forgot the name, but yeah, it's just too many of them. Um, you can ask who is using it. Uh, Somebody is using it as senior lifters. Uh, yeah, six inches, seven inches, uh, small quads like three inches. Uh, people use ultras. Um, well, seems fine. Yeah. Would you ever Tony do love to get AIO? Up 12 inches. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen. Would you well, ever do an AIO for the really small stuff? Hell no. <laughs> First, it requires AC, which I don't feel comfortable doing it on my own. Uh, secondly, I don't like uh, all includes because, well, you honestly, you pay twice as uh, as much for, for FC. And if you knock out one capacitor somewhere, you just throw it away because, you know, not many people, you know, able to rework it. Uh, so on long run, it costs you more. I have Mini Whoop with, uh, with a Mini in it and with uh, 12 amps BL Heli ACs. It fits well. So, uh, yeah, you can, you can do that. Stephen, have you got any questions you want to ask? Because, sorry, we've been... Well, I mean, we've been talking a lot about kind of the, the future, where, where what problems he wanted to solve when he started out. I was wondering, Alex, if you feel you've kind of adequately solved those problems or if there's anything that's just a little niggling thing where you've you've been working on it and, and there's still some place that you want to take it. Oh, uh, good question. Uh, most of the things uh, that was on the initial to-do lists uh, are done. Because first, first, what you need to have a successful product, you need to have good hardware. Uh, we improved it, uh, and I think it's very solid and good platform for years to come. Uh, secondly, software, uh, yeah, it's never-ending story. So you can improve it. If there, there are no more features, uh, features to push, you can concentrate on the flight code and other way around. So there is always something to do. And uh, yeah, it keeps me busy. I, I'm trying to make uh, weekly releases. So weekly or bi-weekly releases just to keep uh, people updated and have small, small pushes. Uh, that's... I think that's nicer than work one year for two zero point something. Yeah. Uh, that's that's how 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 it works. You can get so much more feedback that way as well, rather than getting a huge batch of feedback all at once. You get a little bit of feedback, and it's easier to. Yes, to and if you change something small and it doesn't work well, it's easier to trace back and to repair it or do it better. Then, uh, well, yeah. the good things on Ultra, you never have to. Uh, back up your configuration. You never need to do anything. It knows. It just upgrades. You put the new firmware, and it figure out what to do with it. It's easy Excellent. for pilots. So, 
Yeah, it sounds really great for the community as well to have those constant updates. Creates a, an excellent sense of community and yeah. being able to speak with everyone. Yeah, I have a feature request and people sometimes asking about certain features, but on some things I just say hard no. Because if there there's a feature that will be used by one pilot in 100, it will be not implemented. So yeah. this this unique uh, you know snowflake features like blink me red led when they flip sw flip switch three times, no no way. So what this will be beneficial for many will be worth investing time in. Mm. How do you know when you've crossed that line from a good feature to a feature that is no longer simple? Uh, I have a team for that. They are pilots. They know what they want. Mm -hmm. Jack? Oh, yep. Sorry, Gavin showed up, so I feel okay. the need... So we've we've got a we've got a whole litany of questions here. I don't know if there's anything Cole wants to. Uh, so I actually got through all my questions, to be honest. Okay. So, yeah. Welcome, Gavin. I hope that was spectacular enough for you. Jack has a, a question on <laughs> D shot twenty four hundred versus D shot twelve hundred, and what's up with that? What should pilots choose? As fast as you can. Okay. Especially on ultra for better flight, they say that is, doesn't really matter. And in the, in general, a lot of issues are mar marked uh, uh, twelve hundred compatible, and this is it. And because well, better flight don't really need more. What we realized that uh, uh, G shot code and ACs it doesn't really care how fast you clock it. It just uh, measure the. Uh, the duration of ones and zeros is like 50 and 75 percent and it figures out what's the speed so we use 2400 and even not best pilot can feel the difference between 24 and just 600. Mm -hmm. basically you put as fast a uh, powertrain as you can afford and it make difference okay does the oscilloscope agree, even with like BLHeli ESCs that say they're only D shot twelve hundred? Can you run them at twenty four? Yes, of course. Know. You don't okay. need a oscilloscope for that, or they run or not. Okay. And is that the practical upper limit then, twenty four hundred, or you go all the way up to like uh, more? More if you go more, that is you entering. Well, it's two point four megahertz on this noisy lines. So mm -hmm. you're entering the area where you have a lot of errors. 24 okay. seems fast as what is uh, usable, and that's what we're aiming for. So Ultra works with any EC, so there's, well, except uh, BL Haley ES or all other like 100 years old uh, stuff. Uh, all recent ESCs, uh, uh, yeah, well, KISS, uh, BL Haley, FedEx. It doesn't care. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think that the 2400 mode was added onto AM32 as well. Yeah, so I saw discussion on their Discord, and they were re really, in the beginning, resistant to do that. Because they said, well, we don't need it. Well, I said, well, we do. <laughs> your, your call. Give it a go. Yep. Give it a Can't bump. hurt, so long as there's no noise. Give it a go. Well, why... Why does um, uh, BRHeli telemetry not work? Uh, very simple reasons. Again, okay. <clears throat> first of all, to do a proper telemetry, you need uh, four uh, current sensors because BRHeli, 99% of them has just one. And it's not connected anywhere but to the current pod. So they report current analog from one from zero to three point three volts uh, to flight controller, and better flight has two ADC that want to measure voltage, want to measure current, and this is pretty much enough. So they don't really bother how to implement it. They do send telemetry, but uh, voltage most of the time hard coded or to eighteen and a half volts or something. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why they do that. Uh, another reason, uh, uh, the short telemetry, it carries uh, current, temperature, 
uh, voltage and uh, RPMs on the motor. Seems uh, um, uh, better flight to use uh, bidirectional D-shot, and that's where they concentrate on. Uh, Ultra doesn't use any uh, bidirectional D-shot, so it's uh, all filtering is based on CPU and gyro. So it doesn't really care, but it really likes to have telemetry. On uh, V1, I had a hack uh, where you can connect a current sensor to the camera control part. It's it's DAC ADC. It uh, has two functions. So uh, on V2, I made a dedicated uh, part and pin on connector for BL Heli 32. So it works exactly like uh, uh, a better flight, so all analog. Cool. cool. Right. Yeah. That is all, unfortunately, <laughs> we have time for. Yeah, well, thank you very much for enlightening us. Thank you. I hope to any, see many uh, more any... updates from you in the future. Ooh. Oh, oh, what was oh. that? What oh, was that? sneak peek. <clears throat> oh, oh. Mm. Oh, 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 well, you know what? Oh. I, I did have one last question that I something I did see in your store. Um, was the low flow frame? Um, yeah, it, it, is, is that <laughs> what uh, we were looking at there? Yes, that's actually a uh, low flow I built it this morning. To I wanted to ah. show you, show you guys. Uh, uh, it's it's our favorite frame for now. Uh, uh, Impulse for C and low flow. So that's uh, we did a lot of testing of Ultra on that frame. So uh, uh, it's actually a frame with a history behind it because uh, it was uh, uh, original low flow was made. Uh, I always forget the name by Christian Avedon. Uh, very talented kid and really, really nice design of the frame. Uh, we bought it from him like two years ago because we liked it. And uh, well, in parallel, we've been working on improving it. Mike X was uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, improvements and uh, contributions. And uh, he really feels like he made a lot of uh, good changes in it. But uh, in fact, all team was contributing. Uh, you know, even Sean, Sean Skidmore was uh, adding stuff uh, to the initial version, and I did uh, some changes. Review did some changes. Everyone actually committed something. So this is version three already. That will be uh, probably next week somewhere in my store. We had like twenty frames over, so I thought, oh, let's put it to community, wow. so maybe somebody will like it. Uh, it's nice frame, very well designed, very tight, and flies like a tank. So you can't break it. <laughs> well, yeah, I've seen uh, seen Mike posting all over YouTube and Facebook uh, with those. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, all pilots pu uh, putting low flow. We call it low flow Mike X edition. So he likes it. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Nice and guys. From that's, yeah, that's all we got time for. Um, Alex, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Like, thank you for all the time. Thank you for all the, your patience with us. Um, <laughs> thank you so much you for know. putting us straight. And I apologize for my Kiss Ultra ignorance. It was really great to hear from you. You should try it, mate. He will. I will make him. Yeah, I know. Your I know. <laughs> <laughs> he won't like it. No, really, really great to have you on the show. It's really enlightening and i yeah i can see exactly why pilots are choosing it why they're flying it excellent yeah, yeah. thank you very much it's uh, a it. pleasure to be here yeah it, it you know at the at the end of the day no matter who anyone is we all enjoy the hobby and we all meet somewhere because we love flying and the people in the hobby and and that's what makes everything about this is great yeah uh, should be fun Yep. Uh, oh, uh, this show is sponsored by our lovely Patreons um, who are scrolling by on the screen. We would be nowhere without you guys. You guys rule. Um, you've you've been joined by uh, the the man, Kiss Ultra himself, uh, Alexander Fedorov. Thank you, um, Thanks, Alexander. And uh, we've been joined by everyone's favourite moustache, Stephen. Thank you. Hope to hear more about Kiss Ultra in future. Yep. Uh, we've been joined by my buddy, Cole. See ya. And I've been bright until I fly. Guys, if you can, 
uh, original host of LDO back in the day when we first started. Uh, he's got a Go GoFundMe uh, page if you can donate a couple of bucks. Write let your own out in there. Let people know that we're all family. We're all in this hobby together. If you can, it will be really helpful. And that's all we've got time for. Thank you. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.